charge. Crap. How am I supposed to post to Instagram without my phone? Wait a minute. What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to be posting a video and an image to Instagram with the Instagram Graph API using Python. Our end result is going to be a Python script posting content and when we run it, it's going to post an image and a video to Instagram. So the script is finished. Let's check our Instagram. My last post was right here. If I refresh the page, we should see two new posts. Here's my image and here's my video that was also posted with the Python script. Back over in the output here, first thing we do is we create a media object and we get that object's ID. Then we need to make sure that object has a status of finished before we actually publish the image. We do the same thing with the video. We get the video media object ID and then we keep checking this object's status. As you see, it's a video so it takes a little longer to upload. So we got a few in progresses here and then once it's finished, we can actually publish that video to Instagram. We get the post response ID right here. The last thing down here we're checking for is the user API limit. You can only use the API to make 25 posts per day. Quota total, quota duration is a day, and I'm currently at five. Now let's get our files set up. In my blog code repository, the Instagram Graph API Python folder, I'm going to copy the old defines file and create a new one. I'm going to call this defines underscore py3 for Python 3, because I just recently upgraded to Python 3. Then I'm going to create our posting content script. Then I'm going to open the new defines file and the posting content script in Sublime Text. This defines file is going to be global things such as storing our credentials and making our API call. We need to import requests so we can do get and post requests. We need to import JSON so we can read the JSON that comes back from our API calls. Since I copied this from my other defines, we can get rid of a lot of stuff we don't need for this specific script. For this script, we're just going to be using these credentials. Our access token for the application, you have to make sure you request the permissions Instagram Basic, Instagram Content Publish, Instagram Manage Insights, and Instagram Manage Comments when you generate your access token. I'm going to paste my access token right here, and I'm also going to paste my user's Instagram account ID right here. Then we have our make API call function. We're not going to do any debugging on this one. Instead, we're going to specify a third parameter of type. We're going to write an if statement here to determine what type of request we're going to make. So if it's a post request, we're going to do request.post on the URL with the parameters. Otherwise, we're going to do a get request. Then we create the response dictionary here, the URL that we're hitting, endpoint parameters that have been passed in. The endpoint prompts pretty. This just makes it nice and pretty on the command line when we dump it out. Then we have the actual JSON data, the response from the API. We're going to do a pretty on that. We're not doing any debugging, so we can get rid of this function as well. And that is our defines file. We have our generic make API call function and our get credentials function, which will return us our dictionary of credentials for making the API requests. Now in our posting content, we want to import time and we also want to import our defines file, our py3. And from there, we want to import our get creds function and our make API call function. Now we can use these two functions over here. First function we're going to create is our create media object function. It's going to take in a bunch of parameters. Here are the details on this endpoint. The endpoint is slash media. When we're posting an image, we want to specify the image URL. And when we're posting a video, we want to specify the video URL. The first thing I'm going to set up is the URL. Our endpoint base, which is graph.facebook.com. This will be coming from our defines file, the get creds function as well as our Instagram account ID. Then we have slash media, and that is our endpoint URL. Then we want to create our parameters for this endpoint. Here we are requiring an image or video URL, and then we have a caption and an access token. We'll get the caption from the incoming parameters to the function, as well as the access token. Next, we're going to determine if we're posting an image or a video. In the parameters coming in, we will specify a media type as image or video. If it's an image, we have to specify image underscore URL. And the params coming in where the key will be called media URL. Otherwise, this has to be video URL. And when we call a video, we also have to specify the media type. That will also be coming in our params. Then we just have to return our make API call function. The first parameter is the URL, the endpoint we're hitting. Then we have our params. And this API endpoint right here is a post. And that is our first function. Let's go ahead and see if it works. We're going to start out by getting our params, calling the get creds function. We're here on a defines file. Then we're going to tag on the media type as an image. So we know in our function here to fall into the image. Next, we're going to specify the media URL. I'm going to use this URL right here. 
to an image on my server. This is the image that we will be posting. It has to be on a public server open to everyone so that the API can read from it. Then we're going to do our caption, which is the post text. Then we can call our function. The params we have defined are now being passed to our create media object endpoint, and we're gonna return a response from our make API call function into this variable right here. After that, we're gonna go ahead and print out our response, specifically the media object ID. Grab this ID from our response in our JSON data ID. That will be the ID of the media object created on Instagram. Now I'm gonna run our script. We should see an ID coming back here for our media object. There we go, we have an ID for our media object. Now we need to check the media object status code. We're gonna initialize it to in progress. And then down here after we've printed out the ID, we're gonna do a while loop. And inside this while loop, we're gonna check the status code and when it's finished, then we can proceed. For this, we are going to create a new function called get media object status. And we'll keep pulling this until we get a status of finished. We're gonna pass in the object ID that we're trying to get the status of, along with our parameters. Under our create media object function is where we're gonna define our new function. Here's what the endpoint looks like. Our endpoint being the slash container ID, which is the media object ID right here. Then we have our fields and we wanna get back the status code for that container. We're gonna start by defining our URL, which is the endpoint base slash media object ID. Then we'll set up our endpoint parameters. Fields we wanna look for are status code. Then like all endpoints, we need to have the access token. Then we can return our make API call our URL, our endpoint parameters, and this endpoint is a git. Now in our while loop, we're checking the status of the current media object, and in this response will be the status code. We're gonna save that status code that we defined up here in hopes that it is now finished. Next few lines, we're just gonna print it out to the command line so we know what is going on, and then we're gonna sleep for five seconds. And I'm sleeping here so we're not just constantly hitting this endpoint. Sometimes it takes five to 10 seconds for an image, and it takes even longer for a video, so we don't we know that in the first few seconds, it's not gonna be finished. Once it is finished, we are done with this while loop and we can move on to the published image response. This is the next function we're gonna be creating and it's called publish media. We have to pass along the ID of the object and the parameters. Under our get media object status function, we're going to do our publish media function. Again, we're passing in the media object ID and the parameters. Publish content endpoint looks like this. We have our endpoint, Instagram user ID slash media publish. Then we have our parameters, creation ID and access token. The creation ID is the media object ID right here. Our URL looks like this. We have our endpoint base, Instagram account ID slash media publish. Then we have our endpoint parameters. This one is creation ID which is our media object ID right here, and our access token. Then we make our API call, and this one is a post request. Now all we wanna do is print out some more stuff to the command line so we can see what's happening. For this, I'm just gonna print out the entire response that we're getting back, the JSON data pretty, so it looks nice in the command line. And that wraps up posting an image. Hop over to the command line, run our script again, and this should take us through the container ID, checking the status code, finished now it's actually publishing the media object and we get an id back so we know this is the idea of the post that was posted on instagram hopping over to my instagram i see here's my last post if i refresh the page there's our image our caption with all the hashtags now we can move on to posting a video only real difference in posting the video is setting the video url in the first function that we set up here for the slash media endpoint. So I'm gonna go through this a little more quickly because we're gonna be using these same functions here for posting a video as well. I'm gonna copy my parameters up here, paste them right here. The media type here is gonna be video. Then I have my video MP4 right here, which again has to be publicly accessible just like the image. Update the caption, this video posted to the Instagram, blah, blah, blah. And our parameters are set for our initial call. I'm gonna copy these three lines right here, but instead of calling them image, we're just going to say video. So again, we're creating a media object for the video this time, and we're getting that ID. Then to make sure it's working, we're going to print out the media object ID to the console. Now we have our object, we can do our while loop again. We have to update this status code to be the video media status code. First line here, we're going to check our object status and pass along our video media object ID. Get back that status code, just like we did for the image, and then print out that status code to the command line. Sleep for five seconds. The video is the one where we will see it come back a bunch of times depending on the size and length of the video. 
as in progress still. But once it is finished, we move on just like we did for the images. So we publish our media. I'm passing along our video media object ID with the parameters. Now our video has been published. Print out the response for the published video. And we will see an ID here of the post that was posted on Instagram. Our image and our video have been posted to Instagram. All we have left to check now is the user API rate limits. We're going to create a new function called get content publishing limit. Pass along our parameters and then display that response out to the command line, telling us the quota we have for that day, along with how many posts we have made with the Instagram Graph API. Under published media is where we will define this function. And the endpoint details are as follows. We have our endpoint, our IG user ID slash content publishing limit. Then the fields we want to get back are config and the quota usage. Our URL looks like this. We just specify our Instagram account ID slash content publishing limit. And then we set up our endpoint params. First parameter is the fields. And we're going to request config and quota usage. And of course, we need our access token. We can then make our API call. And this content publishing limit is a git request. Now let's go ahead and run our script one final time. First thing, we get our image back our image object status is finished so now it's posting to Instagram. We get our response back and there's our ID. Our image has been posted. Then we start our video media object. We get the ID for that and then we start checking the status every five seconds. This is different from the image because you see it hasn't been completed yet so it's still uploading the video to the media object. So we wait for it to come back as finished. Media object has been finished so now it's posting our video to Instagram. We got an ID back for the video and then at the very bottom we got our user API limit. Here's our quota of 25 per day and we have made a total of nine posts today with the Instagram Graph API. Over on Instagram here, refresh my page, now I should see the video and the image. There they are. And that is how you post images and videos to Instagram with the Instagram Graph API using Python. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you want to see coded up next. I'll catch you later.